I'm going to do um, an all levels yoga class starting in just a few minutes if you guys want to join. But if anyone can tell me how the audio is. Let's see. Hey, Christina. Okay, can you guys tell me, does the sound, is it sound okay? Last week it was all muffled, so I switched phones. Sounds good? Okay, thank you. On um, Instagram, it's good. If anyone, no one's on Facebook, but hopefully the sound is okay there too. Okay, we'll start in like one minute. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, just find somewhere comfortable to get seated. Maybe um, a rug or grass or a towel laid out or a yoga mat. If you guys want any props, you can use um, books for blocks. Uh, maybe a pillow for Shavasana, or nothing at all. Toot. Give my cat something to play with. Okay. Comfortable seats. Stay up nice and tall. Shoulders over the hips. And starting to notice your breath. Um, keep my hips elevated with a um, pillow. You can always put a blanket under there or something too. Or just sitting, whatever's comfy to you. I enjoy crisscross applesauce, but maybe it's your feet underneath your hips too, or just your feet laying straight out in front of you. Somewhere where you can comfortable and sit for just a few minutes. So for me, um, my yoga practice teaches me a lot about noticing. So I notice, um, notice how, what my tendencies are. I notice where my mind tends to wander. I notice where I tend to hold tension. I notice when my mind tends to wander. Maybe I notice what yoga poses I tend to leave earlier than others, or which I tend to push myself further instead of taking a modification. These things help me to realize what serves and what does not serve me. I think that even though I have this yoga practice, um, when I try and take this off the mat, it can be a lot more challenging, uh, maybe even painful. So I think that these last couple of months have really been calling me to notice. And I've, I think it's been teaching me to notice what in my life is serving me and what has no longer been serving me. And so as things are kind of adjusting and routines are changing, almost failing, um, I'm trying to take trying to take this time to figure out which patterns I've created that I want to continue on and which things I want to leave behind. So I hope that in your practice today you can start to notice 
notice how you feel and maybe notice something that you want to continue to take off of your mat and some things that maybe no longer serve you. And so with that, maybe close your eyes if they're, not, if they're not already. And start to leave the outside world behind. And just notice the way your breath feels. Notice where you feel the breath. Maybe it's in the lower abdomen or the chest. Maybe you notice the breath at the nose. Or maybe it's somewhere different. All of it's okay. We don't have to attach good or bad to it. We just get to notice. And these observations can help inform our decisions and can, can kind of be empowering. We get to choose to create the life that we want. So noticing the rise and fall of the belly. Maybe noticing the sounds that are directly close to you in this room. Or space, maybe you're outside. Or maybe noticing sounds that are a little bit further away. If you're indoors, maybe you're noticing the sounds from outside. If you're outside, maybe just noticing the sounds that are even further away. See if you can tap into that most distant sound. And then maybe coming back in and just noticing the sounds of your breath. We'll start to elongate the breath here. So noticing that belly and seeing as you breathe in, if you can make your belly go larger, fill it with air. And as you breathe out, the belly gets smaller. Let go of the air. So we'll inhale for four seconds and we'll exhale for that same count. If you notice that number is a little bit too short or a little bit too long for you, feel free to modify it. The important thing is that it's the same count on the inhale as exhale. So breathing in, still filling that belly with air for one, two, three, four, breathing out, letting go of the air for one, two, three, four, inhale, fill the belly with air, one, two, three, four, exhale, let the air go, one, two, three, four, breathe in, fill the belly, one, two, three, Four, exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. One more. Inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale it all of their air out, two, three, four. And then just allow the breath to come to you naturally, nothing to do. The breath knows what to do all on its own. And then take your hands to your heart. Notice the heartbeat. I'm going to add to begin with one sound of OM. OM being the three unique sounds, AH, O, and M, blended together to make one beautiful, harmonious sound. 
just like all of the differences in the world coming together to make one beautiful world. So feel free to join in if you'd like or just listen, taking a deep breath in, filling the belly with air. Uh... to your thighs. Gently lower the chin to the chest. And then blink open the eyes nice and slow. Allow yourself to be just soft receivers of what's right in front of you. This present moment. Lift the gaze. Hands can stay here on the thighs or at the knees. And as you breathe in, you're going to lift the chest forward bring forward as if someone had a string pulling you forward, look up. So head, chin is kind of going up. So this is like a seated cow pose that we sometimes do on our hands and knees. And as you exhale, take the chin to the chest, push the back away. So you're rounding the back. Take the seat back, push through the upper back. The arms are kind of straight. And as you inhale, the arms bend, you're pulling the chest back forward, you're spreading through the collarbones and looking up. Exhale, take the chin to the chest, rounding the back, straightening through the arms. Keep moving through this, following your breath. So each inhale, pull the chest forward. Arms are bending, you're spreading wide in the collarbones. Each exhale, your chin's going to your chest, you're straightening through the arms, rounding back. Follow your own breath. Noticing the pace of the inhale versus the exhale. Noticing your movements. And then you can keep just moving straight back and forth like this, or you can add a little bit more organic movement. So maybe circling out the body, going side to side. Just notice any tight spots where the body wants to go and just allow it. Keep moving the body in circles. Letting it go where it needs to, just wakening up the spine, noticing any tension. Maybe one side feels a little different than the other. And then eventually just come back to center. Nice tall spine. So your shoulders are over your hips here. You're getting long out the crown of the head. Take your left hand over to the left side of the body. Breathe in, reach the right hand up and overhead. So you're making a big side stretch on that right side of your body. Draw the right shoulder away from the ear. Keep the right hip connected to the earth. It tends to kind of want to creep up a little. So see if both hips can press down evenly. Breathing in from your right hip crease all the way through the right ribs, out the right finger right fingertips. Deep breath in. See if you can use your breath to spread the ribs with air. Create space. Breathing out, see if you can soften more in the shoulders, in the eyebrows. One more breath like this. Breathe in again from that right hip crease all the way out the right fingertips. Breathe out, soften. Inhale, both hands are going to come up overhead, fingertips, then palms come to touch. As you breathe out, take the right hand to the right side of your body. Left hand is reaching up and over. Keep that left hip pressed into the ground, so left and right are even. Draw the left shoulder away from the ear. As you inhale, getting long from the left hip crease all the way out the left fingertips. Exhale, softening in the face. Breathe in. Creating space in those left, that left side body, the left ribs spread. Breathe out, soften the shoulders. Inhale, coming back upright, hands up overhead, fingertips, then palms to touch. Exhale, hands through to your heart. Let's 
Inhale, circle sweep the hands all the way up overhead. Exhale, hands through to your heart. Do two more like that, nice and slow. As you're inhaling, really just filling the belly up with air, moving the hands as slow as your inhale. Fingertips and palms are touching, being mindful about that. Exhale, hands slowly move through to your heart. Move the hands as slow as the breath. Last one, breathe in, circle the hands all the way up overhead. Filling the belly up with air. Exhale, hands through to your heart. And then come to hands and knees, a tabletop position. Here you want your hands directly underneath the shoulders, your knees directly underneath your hips. Your feet are coming straight back behind your knees and the toes are uncurled so that the tops of the feet are flat. Spread your fingers nice and wide, so create space between each finger so that the web um, of the fingers, that little space in between is kind of stretching and spreading. The index fingers are pointing forward towards the front of your mat or your space, and they're parallel with one another. So take a moment to be mindful of that and look at your hands. So that really kind of sets the foundation up. It gets you more anchored with the ground. Pushing the index finger into the earth, feel the knuckles that up. Uh, the knuckle of the palm kind of pushing into the ground. Beautiful. And as you breathe in, just like we did seated, we're going to look up, spread the collarbones nice and wide, and now lift the tailbone high. Exhale, take your chin to your chest, round your back, cat pose. Drop the tailbone, pushing the upper back away. Inhale, look forward, spread your collarbones, chest lifts. Cow pose, exhale, chin to chest, round your back, cat pose. Inhale again, just following the breath. You don't have to move on my cues. You should move on your breath's cues. Exhale, rounding. Again, either just staying just like that back and forth cat cow or maybe adding organic movement like moving the hips in circles the shoulders in circles noticing what your body is asking for in this position give it some attention and it can be hard to kind of know at first but the more we start to tap into our body the more we can get it what it needs And then returning back to neutral, we'll move through that cow again, lifting the chest, looking up. And as you exhale, first round the back like we did before. And then take the seat back towards the heels briefly for child's pose. The inhale is going to push you back forward though, lifting through the chest, coming back into your cow pose. Spread your collarbones. Exhale, chin to chest. Round the back first and then take the seat to your heels. So your exhale is now a little bit longer than your inhale. Breathe in, come forward, lift through the collarbones, chest rises, look up, exhale, round your back. Then pull the seat back towards the heels, child. Last one, inhale, lift your chest, look up. Exhale, round the back, take the seat to the heels. We'll pause here. You want your knees spread wide. Your feet are coming to touch. Tops of the feet are still rooted, so your feet are not curled under, or the toes are not curled under. Bring your forehead to the earth so that the forehead is connected with something. If it doesn't quite connect, you can bring a pillow, a blanket, something, to put under the head. If you have nothing, sometimes I think it's nice just to bring the hands together and just give it a cushion. Having that um, forehead or that third eye center um, connected on something stimulates the vagus nerve, so it's really great for relaxation. 
and to um, promote that rest and digest and get us out of fight or fight flight nervous system. If your hands aren't underneath your forehead, walk the hands out long in front of you so that you're really stretching through the shoulders, stretching through the arms. Have a little moment here in child's pose to feel your breath. Notice your belly getting bigger as you breathe in. Filling with air, getting smaller as you breathe out, letting all the air go. Child's pose is a pose that can be resting. If it's not resting to you, you're always welcome to come lying flat on the belly. But it's something that's available to you to rest throughout practice. So noticing if your body's asking for rest and giving yourself that is a beautiful practice of yoga. One more breath here. And then walk your hands underneath your shoulders. Push the palms, push the hands into the earth, lift the seat back up. Tabletop position. Noticing your foundation again, spreading the fingers nice and wide. Index fingers parallel. The hands you want um, a little bit in front of the shoulders now. So about like a whole palm in front of the shoulders. Curl the toes under. And then lift the knees about an inch or so off the ground. Pause here. Draw the shoulder blades down the back. And then um, lift up and back with the hips, bringing the legs towards straight. However, a slight bend in the knees is always okay to protect the hamstring. Keep pressing through the index finger knuckle. Keep pressing through the uh, thumb finger. Thumb finger? Is it a finger or a thumb? <laughs> Drawing the shoulder blades down the back, bend into one knee, straighten the other leg. So I'm bending into my left, straightening my right to feel the stretch on my right hamstring. Breathing through any tight spots, any tension that you notice coming up here, and then switching. So bending through the right, straightening through the left. Again, just noticing any tension. Maybe notice if one side feels a little bit different. Maybe giving yourself a little bit more time to breathe on that side. So you can pedal back and forth. Just take a few breaths here. Keep pushing into those hands. Beautiful. And then reach the right leg back behind you. Bend your right knee. Actually, yeah, we'll bend the knee and then bring the right knee forward so that it's coming to touch or come close to your nose. It's not really going to touch. And then breathe out, take it back behind you. So just kind of like a crunch. Breathe in, bring the right knee forward just as much as it goes. Breathe out, take it back behind you. Even if that right knee is just going like an inch or so, just kind of bring it forward. You can shift the shoulders so they're closer over the wrist, breathe out, take it back behind you. And then bring the right foot back to the ground, lift the left foot. Deep breath in, and as you breathe out, crunch, bring the left knee close to the left nose. I guess your only nose, not your left nose. Breathe out, take the left foot back behind you. Do this with your breath. Breathe in, crunch, so that the shoulders are coming more over the wrists, the knees coming close to the nose. Exhale. Take the leg back behind you. One more here, breathe in, crunch, knee closer to the nose. Breathe out, take it back behind you. Take the left foot to the ground. And notice if you need some rest. So maybe coming back down to a child's pose. Knees wide, feet together, forehead grounded. Taking three deep breaths. If your rest is in um, down dog or on your belly, that's okay too. Filling the belly with air as you breathe and letting all the air go as you breathe out. A 
bottom of that third. Exhale, you can push back up into first tabletop and then curling the toes under, lifting the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Lift the right leg back behind you. And then step the right foot forward so the right foot is coming between the hands. That makes the choice. That might take several steps to get there. But eventually the right foot is going to come between the hands and then you're going to fully ground the back foot so that you're not up on the toes, but the whole foot is on the earth. Step the right foot over a little bit so that the right heel bisects the back inner arch. So it's the right foot's just coming to the middle of the back foot. Getting strong in the feet here, pressing the right whole right foot down and then grounding the back outer edge of the left foot so that you're lifting that left arch and then you're going to circle the left hand back behind you rise the torso up keep a bend in the front knee warrior two draw the tailbone under keep bending into your front knee look at your right toes you still want to be able to see your right toes here if you can't see your right toes that's your body just telling you to take a little bit longer of a step stance so reaching that right foot forward more. You want your right knee to um, trace towards the outer edge of the right foot. So it's tracking kind of over that pinky toe. Your hips are level with that long edge of your mat. While your gaze can go over your front fingertips. So warrior two or Virabhadrasana. This is a strong, fierce pose. Keep drawing the shoulder blades down. Keep breathing. Deep breath in here. And as you breathe out, take the left hand to the back thigh. Turn your um, right palm up. Reach forward first and then reach up. Breathe in, breathe out, reach all the way back. So you're getting again a nice big right side body stretch. So breathing from that right hip crease all the way out the right fingertips. Deep breath in, deep breath out. One more breath here. As you breathe out, come back up into your warrior two pose. And then <laughs> put your knees on the mat. Then you're going to turn your right toes, punch your move over a little bit. Turn your right toes to face forward. And then you can straighten through that both feet. <laughs> um, actually, you want the toes both outwards. Sorry, this cat is distracting me. <laughs> so your, your feet are at a diagonal. Um, so the right foot's facing that right corner of your mat. The left foot's facing the left corner. The legs are straight. Breathe in. Reach the hands up overhead like your body's making a star. Deep breath in. Getting long through the fingertips. And as you breathe out, take your hands to your hips. And now we'll twist the toes the opposite way so that the toes are... Um, Coming more to point in, not too much. Keep grounding through the outer edges of both feet, getting up, standing up nice and tall from those hips all the way out the crown of the head. Deep breath in, and as you breathe out, start to fold forward a little bit. You can keep a slight bend in the knees. Just go about halfway. Pause here, and then notice from the tailbone out the crown of the head, see if you can get length. You don't want your back rounded at all. You don't want it hunched in. See if you can just be nice and long there. Deep breath in. And then if you feel comfortable to move forward, you can breathe out and fold a little bit further forward, maybe coming all the way down, but still focusing on that nice long spine. Wherever you're at, see if you can let the head go. Um, if it's comfortable to you, you can keep the hands on your hips or you can reach for the outer edges of the feet. So we spend a lot of our days holding up our head with our neck. See if you can let your head release to gravity. Give your neck a break. Maybe shake the head yes, shake it no. Keep grounding down with the outer edges of the feet, lifting the arches. You can keep a bend in the knees if that helps. Taking a few deep breaths here in this wide leg forward fold. Maybe you feel your belly coming closer to your thighs. I swear she's not this meaty until the camera comes on and she turns into a show off. Mm -hmm. 
and then take your um, let's see then just bend or turn your right foot to face back towards the front of the mat and then turn your torso to frame over that right foot again right knee bent and then take the right foot to the back of the mat so that you're in a plank pose just briefly feel the palms of the hands pull back towards the tips of the toes deep breath in here fill the belly with air breathe out take the knees to the earth still keeping a long spine keep the butt up but take the chest down so that the chest is coming right between the hands Take the chin to the earth. So knees, chest, chin are touching, the butt staying up. The shins are off the ground. And then lengthen the legs back behind you so that you're all the way flat on the belly. Take the hands beside the ribs. So it's kind of further back. Keep drawing the elbows closer into the ribs. So instead of splaying out side to side, the elbows are coming back. And as you breathe in, pull the palms of the hands back in order to lift your chest up for cobra pose. Breathe out, lower back down. We'll do that again. Breathe in, pull the palms of the hands back, lift the chest up, keep drawing those elbows in. Exhale, lower. Breathe in, lift up with the chest. Push the tops of the feet down, almost lift the feet. Do lift the thighs. Keep looking up, keep lifting the chest. Either stay right here in this low cobra pose, or if you want to go a little further and notice what your body's asking for, push your hands into the ground, straightening through the arms, pushing the tops of the feet into the earth, lifting the thighs off the ground. So if you're going to have these straight arms, do also lift the thighs off the ground so that you're not collapsing into the low back. This is upward facing dog, or to Mukha Svanasana. If you're here, keep lifting the heart, actually wherever you are, keep lifting the heart, maybe looking back, drawing the shoulder blades back. Deep breath in, and as you breathe out, we're going to curl the toes under, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. So set up the stance so that you're Hands are in front of the shoulders. Nice wide stance, drawing the shoulder blades down the back and keep that slight bend in the knee. Lift the left leg back behind you. Deep breath in, and as you breathe out, take the left foot all the way between the hands. Maybe it takes a few steps to get there. Fully ground the back foot. Step the left foot over so that the left heel bisects the back inner arch, coming right into the middle of the foot. Ground the outer edge of the back foot so that you're lifting that right arch up. Keep pushing into the left foot. Coming up onto the fingertips, getting light in the arms so that you're heavy in the feet. And then circle the right hand back behind you. Lift your torso up. Bend deeply into the left knee. Look so that you can see those left toes still. If you can't, just take a little bit longer of a stance drawing the tailbone under, but square the hips with the long edge of the mat. So the hips are facing long while your gaze is going over the front fingertips. So hips are opposite direction of that front knee. Keep reaching long out the fingertips. Keep bending into the front knee. Keep curling the tailbone under. Keep breathing. Inhale, and as you exhale, bring the right hand to the back right thigh, flip the front palm up to, to face up, and then breathe in. First reach just a little bit forward, and then reach the hand up overhead, and then back behind you. So that left side body stretch, left shoulder drawing away from the ear, getting long from the left hip all the way out the left fingertips, ground the right outer edge of the foot, Lifting the right arch. Keep putting weight into the feet. Deep breath in. Breathe out. Stay here. One more breath in. 
As you breathe out, it's coming back into that warrior two pose, just briefly, and then straightening through the front leg. Turn both toes to face diagonal, so to the corners of the mat. Breathe and reach the hands up overhead, making a nice strong star. Fingers spreading nice and wide, shoulder blades drawing down the back, pressing the feet into the earth. Deep breath in, and as you breathe out, take the hands to the hips. Start to fold forward. Feel free to keep that bend in the knees, protecting your hamstrings, keeping your feet from, or your legs from hyperextending, folding the torso forward so that you have a long spine. If you enjoyed that, where your hands were last time, you can continue to do that, or you can interlace your fingers behind your back, maybe first starting at the low back. If you're interlacing the fingers, see if you can pull the palms all the way together, and then walk the hands up to about mid-back. See if you can bring the elbows, the shoulders, closer together. They're not gonna move much, but feel that feeling in the back to pull the shoulders closer, and then breathe in, reach the hands up and away from the body, maybe towards the ceiling or the sky. Deep breath in here. Deep breath out. Keep grounding through the outer edges of the feet. One more. Inhale. Exhale. If you have your hands interlaced, slowly unhook them. Bring them back to the ground. Twist the torso to come over that front foot again. Left toes face towards the short edge of the mat. Come up onto the back toes. Step the left foot back to meet the right, keep the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Three deep breaths here, or in child's pose, whatever is kind of rest for you. See if you can hear your breath and feel it in the body. Bottom of that final exhale, look between the hands. Step the left foot forward, followed by the right. Either big steps or slow little teeny steps so that you're coming with your feet all the way to the front of the mat. Fold forward by keeping a slight bend in the knees, or maybe a large bend, enough that your low ribs are connecting with your upper thighs. You're almost making like a little tabletop for your ribs to sit in. Sit on and then let your head hang. Let the neck go. Fold forward. And as you breathe in, either coming up to the fingertips or hands on the shins, whatever allows you to have a flat back. So it's a half lift, so the spine is nice and flat from the tailbone out the crown of the head. Exhale, folding here. Two more. Breathe in, half lift, flat back. Looking towards the earth so that your neck is long. Breathe out, fold forward. Last one, breathe in, half lift, flat back, breathe out, fold. Take your hands to your hips, slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae, come up to standing, taking your time as we were inverted for a little while. And then coming to a Tadasana pose, so that the feet are hip distance or coming to touch. Hip distance is these inner hip creases. So for reference, I'd say that that's about two fists apart. And then you're grounding all four edges of the feet evenly. Your weight, you want to kind of be even from front to back and side to side. So notice that a little bit, maybe play with it. I like to kind of lift my toes, lift my heels, find that even spot on the feet. And then you want your hips stacked over the Ankles, shoulders over the hips, this bone alignment. Open the shoulders, palms are facing open. Notice how it feels to stand in this alignment here. Take a deep breath here, fill the belly with air. Deep breath out, let the air go. Bring your hands to your heart. Close your eyes for a moment. Notice the heartbeats. Notice 
any energy that's rearranged in the body now from when you started practice, what energy that's you, that you have created, that you have moved. And then softly blink, open the eyes. Take the hands by the side. And we're gonna move um, with our breath here, maybe starting to find a little bit of balance if you'd like. We'll start with just the arms and the breath. So breathing in, we're gonna fill the belly with air, lifting the arms up. The top of the inhale, the hands are all the way up overhead. And as you breathe out, lower the hands down, the bottom of the exhale, the hands are all the way down. Let's try that a few more times. Breathe in, fill the belly with air. Lift the hands up, belly fully filled with air as the hands are all the way up overhead. And as you breathe out, letting all the air go. And all the air is gone, the hands are all the way down. And now I'll add the feet with that. So breathe in. Lift the hands, fill the belly with air, come up on the tippy toes. See if you can move slow so that you're fully on the tops of the tippy toes. The hands are raised and the belly is fully inhaled as you come up and as you breathe out. Slowly lower, this is where the balance comes in. The hands, the feet, and the belly get smaller. So timing that all together can be a challenge to see if you can really focus. Breathe in, slowly come up up onto the tippy toes, lifting the hands up overhead, filling the belly with air. Breathe out, hands coming down, slowly coming off of the tippy toes, belly comes up, um, lets all the air go. Do a few more like that. Really moving slow, playing with that balance, lifting everything up, and breathing out, slowly letting everything go. Two more. Breathe and lift. <laughs> Breathe out, lower. And last one. Breathe and lift. Breathe out, lower. Nice and slow breaths. And then maybe shake the legs out a little. Notice how the tension kind of builds in the legs there. And then we'll come back down to the ground. Breathe in, lift the hands up overhead. Urdhva Hastasana, upward salute, exhale. Forward fold, like we've done before with that slight bend in the knees, letting the head hang. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. Step B. Right foot back, followed by the left plank pose, just briefly. And as you exhale, either knees, chest, chin, or slowly lowering all the way to the belly through chaturanga. This is like a push up. Take the hands back behind you, chin to slightly resting. As you breathe in, we're going to lift the chest up off the ground. Similar to what we did with in Cobra, but the hands are behind us. See if you can lift the hands off the ground too. Almost lift the legs again. Lift the chest a little bit more. Keep lifting, shoulder blades drawing back. Feel the breath here, one more. See if you can stay, notice the mind wandering. Notice the mind saying, let me out. And as you breathe out, slowly lower. Rest the right cheek on the earth. Bend the knees. Take the feet to the left. Take the feet to the right. Windshield wipe the legs back and forth. Rest the left cheek, still windshield wiping the legs. And the feet go back behind you. Take another breath to rest here. 
and then turn onto your backs. Hug both knees into the chest. Give yourself a nice big squeeze. Rock from side to side. And then take the knees all the way over to the right side. Open the chest, the torso up to the left. Left hand can either come out into a T or it can make more of a cactus shape like a goalpost arm. Whatever's more comfortable for you. Um, if it's comfortable for the neck, you can take your gaze over the left shoulder or you can keep looking up. What's important is that you're twisting through the torso so that the torso is going the opposite direction of the knees. Slowing the breath down here. Breath here. And slowly bring the knees back to center. Then take the knees over to the left side. Open the torso up to the right. Right arm is coming into a T or a cactus. Gaze is either straight up or over the right shoulder. Torso is twisting the opposite direction of the knees. Relax into the twist. Slow the breath. One more breath. And slowly bring the knees back to center. Give them a nice big hug in again, rocking side to side. And then reach both feet up towards the ceiling. Either keep them just facing up towards the ceiling or you can lift the hips and take the feet back behind you. I like to kind of hold uh, my calf here and just push a little bit down so you feel a little bit of um, low back stretch. You can also just keep reaching the toes back behind the head. They don't have to touch the ground. Gentle pressure, uh, watching out for the neck. Breathing. If your um, feet are back behind you, slowly lower the hips back to the ground, keeping the feet up towards the ceiling. Hands can come down, either beside you or one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly, noticing the breath. See if you can move the breath from the belly to the chest, then out of the chest, out of the belly. Still keeping the legs up towards the ceiling, moving the breath, belly to the chest, chest to belly. Keep breathing like that. Keep moving your legs up. Notice if your mind wants to bring the legs down. But know that you have the strength to keep them up still. And you can keep a bend in the knees, but still keep the legs up. And 
knowing that it can serve you to do something your mind tells you not to do or to go against what your mind is telling you not to do. Our minds like to tell us a lot. Keep focusing on the breath. One more inhale. One more exhale. And then slowly, super slowly lower the legs down. See if you can pause it about halfway. Feel your core shake. Feel the legs heavy. And then maybe even more slowly, lower them all the way to the ground. Open the legs up wide. Feet can splay open. Hands open wide. Instead of them being nice and close to the body, see if they can stretch open. Shoulder blades relaxing open. Palms facing up. And the whole body rests on the earth. If there's anything else you need to be comfortable without moving too much, you can grab that. Maybe it's a pillow for the head. Maybe it's some height underneath the knees. Letting the whole body relax on the earth. Maybe you have a towel for the eyes or an eye pillow. Give yourself a little bit of cover. Blocking out the light. Let the arms relax. After engaging the legs like that, notice how it feels to have them heavy and supported on the earth. Notice every toe. Thumb, the fingers, soften your shoulders, notice the elbows, the wrists, relax the ankles, the heels, notice your knees. Thankful for your body for holding you up all day long. Soften the eyebrows. Relax the jaw. Relax the entire face. The entire body is resting. There's nowhere to be. There's nothing to be. Just rest. Shavasana.
and breath to your breath. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And come back to the room. Noticing the sounds around you. Maybe gently wiggling the fingers, the toes, turn back to the body. If you'd like, you can do a big stretch overhead, attempting to move slow, keeping the heat. Eventually, from beneath the chest. Making your way to right side, fetal position. Mm. And we're on the face for gratitude. Reflection. An opportunity to notice what served you today and what no longer does choosing to let go of the things that do not, and allowing that to be fluid, to change in every moment. Pressing the hands into the earth, using the strength of the arms to slowly make your way up to a seated position. Taking your time to get there. Keeping the eyes closed, keeping the heat. Continuing to breathe. Noticing your breath here. As I move through this practice of noticing, not to judge, not to label, but so that we can Notice more of our actions and inactions and be more empowered over what serves us and what does not. And knowing it's okay for whatever comes up, just noticing these things and allowing the body to move through them. So keep noticing your breath. You breathe in. I know that I am inhaling. And as you breathe out, I know that I am exhaling. Keep thinking these words. I know that I am inhaling. I know that I am exhaling. mind might wander other places, that's okay. Notice that. Allow it to happen and gently guide it back to the meditation. And you can gently let that float away and bring your hands to your heart. Thank you so much for practicing. It not only benefits you, but it benefits the whole world. Thank you for allowing me to guide you. The lights, the love, and everything that's special in me honors that same light, that same love, and all that's special in each one of you. Namaste. Thank you guys for joining. If you have thoughts, um, questions, or anything you want to see more of or learn more of, please send me a message. Um, it's so great to practice with you guys tonight. Thank you guys for joining.